Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Pest Control After a Pandemic, brought to you by Pest Management Professional Magazine and our sponsor of the event, Control Solutions, Inc. I'm Danielle Pesta from North Coast Media, the digital editor for Pest Management Professional, and I will be your event manager for today's presentation. Before we get started, I want to let you know that today's webinar will be recorded. You are currently in a listen-only mode. A recording of this webinar will be posted to mypmp.net slash webinars and will also be emailed to you tomorrow. At this time, I'd like to get com you comfortable with our console and the ways you can participate during today's presentation. Please notice the Q&A panel on the right-hand side of your console. If you have a question, type it in the panel's text box, then click Submit to place your question in queue. We encourage you to ask and enter any questions you may have for our speaker during the presentation. We will address these questions at the end of the presentation during the Q&A portion. Questions submitted during registration have already gone to our speaker and may be covered during the presentation. If you experience any technical difficulties during today's event, you may use the same Q&A panel on your screen to submit your issue and assistant producer Grace Ryback or I will personally assist you. You may learn more about today's speaker and moderator by viewing their photo, bio, and contact information in the panel located in the upper left-hand corner of your console. PMP Magazine's Twitter feed is placed on the left side of your screen. You may use the hashtag PMP webinar to submit questions during today's event or to enter into discussions with other attendees. Below PMP's Twitter feed, there is a Contact Us panel in the bottom left for you to send any follow-up remarks to our speaker via email. These inquiries will not be addressed during the live event. Finally, if you are logged into your social media accounts, you can share the webinar's title, description, and URL with your friends or colleagues using the Share This widget that is placed directly below the slides. Also below the slides, the Refer a Colleague panel will allow you to email today's webinar information to a coworker or other industry professional. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to today's moderator, PMP editor, Heather Gooch. Thank you, Danielle. And welcome everyone to our webinar on how to offer pest control after a pandemic. We have a fantastic speaker lined up for you today. But first, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Control Solutions, Inc., or CSI, for making today's webinar possible. Today, Dr. Janice Reed, a board-certified entomologist and the technical services manager for CSI, will discuss working with residential and commercial customers, uh, those who are open, open on a limited basis, and completely closed. Dr. Reed has served as a staff entomologist and technical director with a large, independently owned pest management company. She also has years of research and pesticide education experience. Dr. Reed earned her bachelor's, master's, and doctorate in entomology with a focus on urban entomology from Texas A&M University. Her research and interests include urban entomology and the professional pest management industry overall. Thank you for sharing your expertise with us today, Dr. Reed. We're looking forward to your thoughts on this timely topic. So now I'll turn it over to you. All right, well, howdy everybody and welcome to the webinar. Uh, today, obviously, we're in a very unusual situation in our country and on our planet right now, and obviously, it's impacting our industry. And the goal for today is kind of to give you a, a set of guidelines, I guess, to think about these accounts, how you're servicing them, and how we're moving forward as we navigate our way through uh, COVID-19 and you know, how it impacts us as, you go, as we go through the next few months. So what I hope to get through today is first, what to expect from your commercial accounts and your residential accounts. And the reason I've got these separate is because they're, we as PMPs are gonna have to be handling these accounts completely differently than even maybe we did in the past. Uh, the next thing we're gonna talk about quite a bit is what to expect from your customers. What are they experiencing right now? And what's kind of going through their mind as it pertains to everything we're experiencing, and pest control. And then kind of finally, we're going to talk about what are some things that I recommend for recovering your accounts as we move through this pandemic. 
when I originally wrote this presentation, I had hoped by mid-July of 2020 that we would be through uh, with the worst of this, uh, of this situation. And unfortunately, we're just not there. So as we talk about pest control after a pandemic, I think what we're going to have to kind of switch this to is pest control after a pandemic starts. So well, there's going to be a little bit of, uh, of changing there. So what I really want to start with is, is this key point, and that is nothing will be the same. You know, I have heard the new normal. I have heard the, you know, nor now normal. I I've heard all of these uh, sayings where people talk about what we're going to expect in the next few months to few years. And to be frank, nothing is going to be the same. And at the end of the day, normal is a setting on the dryer. There's nothing about what we're experiencing that's ever going to be normal. So the idea is to really start thinking about this as you're going to have to do things differently. And, and we as an industry are going to have to embrace that. So nothing is going to be the same. You're going to need to have communicate more, both with your coworkers, technicians, management, the ladies who answer the phone, and gentlemen who answer the phone. Uh, everybody in your staff is going to have to be more communicative. Everybody's going to have to be on the same page so that there is a consistent message being delivered to your customers. So we want to make sure we're doing a lot of communication with our coworkers, our colleagues, but also with our customers. Your customers, the people in your community, are going to want to know what you personally and what your company are doing to work safely. And especially if you have someone on your staff who is feeling ill or shown symptoms of COVID-19, what are your plans that are in place? Um, what do you have in place to protect both your other workers and the services in which you, you are going into and out of. And I think as we move forward, it's going to be a safety first um, attitude about the whole thing. The next thing we really need to start talking about is how PMPs are going to handle in-person interactions in a world of social distancing, virtual conferences such as this one, and working from home. So unfortunately, in our industry, our work is not at home. It's in the field, on structures, on lawns, on around buildings, around people. So how are we going to handle all these in-person interactions that we are going to have to have? So that's what I hope to address as we move through today's presentation. So as we move through, nothing will be the same. Let's talk about a few things that will be different. So the basic and the not so basic changes. So if you're servicing interior structures uh, at all, which I think the overall occurrence of that is going to go down, PPE will become a daily need, not to protect us from the pesticides that we're using, but to protect us from each other. So, you know, typically we would go in wearing maybe gloves, maybe safety glasses. But now we're going to be talking about wearing masks at the minimum, perhaps a face shield, um, gloves, shoe covers maybe, other types of protective equipment. Again, not just protecting us from the products that we're using, but to protect us and the people around us. Uh, hand sanitizer is something that is becoming every restaurant, store, retail business, uh, commercial account that I go in and out of, there is hand sanitizer at the door. Uh, and grocery stores, everywhere you go, there's hand sanitizer. And, you know, there's been this focus on cleanliness and hand washing. So that's some things that we are going to see more and more. Now, I do want to talk a minute about hand washing. And I know that this was all over everything a few months ago. But hand washing isn't just running your hands under water and drying them off. It is a 20 to 30 second process where you wet your hands, uh, turn off the tap, soap up, lather for 20 seconds. Uh, I know there was a lot of you know, sing the happy birthday song twice, you know, making sure you're scrubbing all parts of your hands, not just your palms and the undersides of your fingers. So you want to make sure you're cleaning everything um, on your hands. Then rinse well and then dry using a clean towel. So that's how we hand wash. Now I want to address um, hand sanitizer. Now hand sanitizer is not a replacement for hand washing. Uh, if, if you have the means and availability Using soap and water is 
always better than hand sanitizer. And the reason for that in our industry is hand sanitizer does nothing to remove pesticide residue. So if you're not washing your hands, you're not removing that incidental pesticide residue that might be on your hands. So we in our industry should be focused on hand washing all the time and using hand sanitizer only as a, uh, a viral or bacterial protection. So interior and exterior services. Typically, you know, in the last 20 to 25 years, really, since I've been in industry, most commercial food service accounts, all of those types of accounts really require interior service. You know, if we're talking about a restaurant, if we're talking about a grocery store, if we're talking about something where there's food prepared inside, typically it requires interior service because so many things, so many goods are moving in and out insects are brought in, pests are brought in, and we constantly kind of have to monitor and, and really consider that situation. Whereas residential and a lot of industrial type accounts are much more exterior focused because most of the problems that we get called for from those accounts are coming from the outside. And again, I'm, I'm generalizing here. I, I realize that German roaches could end up in any of these accounts, but in general, for general pests, commercial food service, interior and exterior, residential, mainly exterior. So we, that is one good thing from, from a perspective on, on PMPs. Like I mentioned, interior services are gonna mean more PPE. We're gonna have to wear more PPE, masks, gloves, face shields, not, not to, for, to prevent pesticide exposure, but because of bio, viral and other biological concerns. And we need to show our clients that we're protecting them and ourselves during, during this pandemic. So I know you've all heard that uh, PMPs are an essential service and that pest control is an essential service. So I wanted to spend just a couple of minutes on how we got to be an essential service. So the Department of Homeland Security issued a memo in March of 2020 on all the uh, what is an essential service during the COVID-19 response. And in this memo was this statement, workers such as plumbers, electricians, exterminators, and other service providers who provide services that are necessary to maintaining the safety, sanitation, and essential operation of residences. So I wanna say that again, maintaining the safety, sanitation and essential operations. So the Department of Homeland Security has called pest management necessary for maintaining safety, sanitation and essential operations. So if that doesn't make you feel good about what is happening in our, in our industry, um, this is something you can be proud of. You can be proud of being a PMP because we are necessary to maintaining the safety of where people live and work. So again, hopefully throughout the shelter in place and the stay at home orders, you were able to continue servicing most of your accounts, especially those services that were outside only. And the reason that's important is because we can manage incursions of a number of pests like ants, cockroaches, rodents, and other pests simply by maintaining that exterior service, that exterior um, application to the structure, whether it be baiting, uh, rodent baiting, cockroach baiting, using an exterior perimeter application, whatever that needs to be. But what about indoor services during the pandemic? In most cases, this has not been possible. And there's been a couple of reasons why. Uh, first, businesses were completely shut down. And if you think about like um, bars, gyms, uh, in, in kind of entertainment, all of those things were completely shuttered. And if, if nobody's there working, odds are you're not going to get in to do essential pest control services. In some cases, our customers denied us to entry just out of um, an ex you know, extreme caution or maybe a little bit of fear. There was also a lot of um, customer suspending service, and I saw this a lot in commercial. Again, those retail establishments, those small uh, mom and pop kind of uh, run businesses that they were closed, they're not going to have the money to outlay for services. And a lot of times we didn't have safety protocols in place. Nobody did. Um, 
the, the entire country was kind of caught unawares. And so we didn't have a lot of um, plans set in place for what to do if. So let's talk about the individual accounts that we service on a daily basis. And we're going to start with restaurants and food service. So up to this point, what to expect? So going back to my original statement, nothing is the same, normal as a setting on the dryer. Um, labor, the environment, healthcare, our service industries, retail, entertainment, it's all been impacted. So we have to assume restaurants, food services, and pest control is going to be impacted as well. The economic impact of everything is still up in the air and really unknown. We know that a lot of people are out of work. We don't know how permanent that's going to be. So that's going to continue to evolve and change as we move forward through this pandemic. So in a lot of retail, food service, and other commercial type of accounts, some have been open throughout this, this entire event, grocery stores, pharmacies, gas stations, liquor stores, um, public works, banks. You know, a lot of these places are open, but they're limiting access, they're limiting entry. Maybe it's only 15 people at a time in a, in a moderately sized building. Um, but all of these places are operating. And so typically, these are the kind of accounts we can still get into and do service. Some have been partially open or maybe have limited operation. And the one that I use most here has been restaurants. They were allowed to operate, but they weren't allowed for people to come into the building. And then finally, other things have been completely shut down. So retail, any kind of self-care business, so massage, uh, nail studios, um, barbers, uh, anything like that has been shut down. Entertainment, theme parks, bars, all of those things have been completely closed. So what's been happening from a pest control standpoint? So if you take those accounts that are open as normal, again, hopefully you've been able to continue with your regular service in these accounts. They've been able to, again, get regular pest control. They've had regular cleaning. And I hope at this point these accounts are going to be regular um, kind of status quo and everything's kind of going to be the same, uh, obviously different, but uh, that, that not the same new. Um, but again, when you start talking about everything that's changed, it's important to communicate with your customers, communicate with your staff, tell them what you're doing, tell, you, tell them how you're doing it, how, what precautions you're taking. Um, are you taking your temperature every day? Are you taking your service technician's temperature every day? These are the things your customers are going to need to know. On a limited basis, accounts. Um, fewer customers, fewer staff coming in and out. A lot of times in restaurants, for example, they might be having limited offerings. If their typical menu had 45 items on it, maybe they're offering 20 items. Um, there's a lot more paper products being brought in because many restaurants moved to doing almost exclusively takeout. And so when you start thinking about all of the extra packaging, plastic, paper, all of the things you need to prepare a to-go order versus putting food on a plate, there's a lot more paper goods and, and single-use goods being brought into these uh, accounts. And what does that mean from a pest control standpoint? Every time they get a shipment of napkins or straws or uh, pick pack containers, you know, the little fork, knife, spoon, salt and pepper napkin thing, um, every time they get a shipment of those, a potential incursion of pests could come with it. So again, what's important in these accounts? Communication. You've got to tell your customers what you're doing, why you're doing it, why it's important that they continue service. All of these things need to be communicated and need to be communicated regularly. So what about an account that's been completely closed? A situation where no one is going in. The business owners aren't going in, customers aren't going in, nobody's going in. Examples here, bars, um, places like theme parks, places like those um, entertainment venues we talked about. So one of the questions that I ask is, before closure, was that, that building, was that account, was it prepped for being closed for two months, eight weeks, six weeks? 
Was it cleaned? Was food discarded? Was the trash taken out? You know, simple things like that. Um, was water being run in the drains regularly? Were, was basic maintenance being taken uh, into account? Like, in a lot of cases, the answer was no. And if you leave a building alone for two weeks, and let's say there's five German cockroaches in there, uh, two weeks turns into six weeks, turns into eight weeks, you can have huge numbers of pests build up very quickly, and nobody is there to notice, see, report it, or treat it. What do we do here? Again, communication is key. We've got to be talking to these customers. I realize you're closed, but I need to get in there and address the pest situations that I know are, are happening in there. You've got to let me in. If we have to barter a service or put off payment, but you know, to protect you, maybe it might behoove you to get in there and address those problems before they become major ones. So let's get into it how we can actually deal with these accounts. So if you're dealing with an account that's open as normal, like I mentioned, this is going to be continuing your regular service, your normal pest prevention, your normal IPM. And we are going to manage pests as they appear, but with the addition of additional PPE and social distancing as we work. So we have to be aware of where people are around us, talking with people, maintaining that six-foot social distance, and really thinking about those things from a, a worker protection and also the public protection. So what about those limited basis accounts? Um, you really don't want to try to service these as often as possible and service indoors when you can. Again, because there are so many factors that are different than they were three, four, five months ago. Again, additional PPE and social distancing are going to be necessary. And what about those a completely closed accounts? Again, no access. You're likely you can't get inside, but you might be able to get to the outside. You might be able to talk to the business owner and say, hey, I'd love to get in there and take a look around. I realize you're closed right now. Money may be tight. What can we do to work that out? You know, keeping your customers, keeping them happy, letting them see you are seeing them as a valuable customer. So how can you proceed from there? So what might you expect to see in newly reopened businesses? So we have a lot of businesses that were closed for, again, a couple of months, and they've been allowed to reopen, but on a limited basis. So what are some things that we can expect to see? As I mentioned, I think one of the things that we can expect to see is significant pest problems. Because when you, again, leave an, an account boarded up for, for two months, and if there's five German cockroaches in there, you now have 500 German cockroaches running around. So significant pest problems. How are you going to tackle these problems, and what should you do first? In my estimation, I think that we should really start with cleaning. Start with putting water back into the pea trap, getting everything cleaned, getting everything sanitized. And that way, once that's done, we can go in knowing that it's a clean environment using our PPE and know we're not going to contaminate that environment. So why should we recommend this? So did the, oh, we just talked about that. Recommend that so you can protect yourself, you can protect your client. The next thing you really want to talk about is, again, sanitation. Was the closing a planned event? Was there time to plan? Did that business owner know two, three days before it was closing, that he wasn't going to go back there for two months? No. Nobody thought that the closing was going to last that long. So again, was it cleaned properly? Was, were things put away? Were things properly stored? Did they have fresh food that was there at the time and now it's a rotting mess? Um, were the grease traps cleaned? Were the floor drains cleaned? Are they now empty of water? And so every German cockroach in the city can come up those drains. Not German. Every American cockroach in the city can come up those drains. Again, most businesses, many businesses, were not properly prepared before these stay-at-home and closed orders were put into place. And if they were, they weren't prepared for the length that they ended up being closed. So again, sanitation first because you want to disinfect those surfaces, fill those pea traps, do as much of the integrated pest management that you can, and then go in and start with your management tactics. And that means starting with the most important pests first. Now, again, this is my opinion. I think when I say starting with the most important pests first, I think we start with all of the public health pests. 
Um, there are three-ish, but I'm going to start with these two, and that is rodents and cockroaches. Um, rodents, we can trap, we can use baits, we can do whatever kind of integrated pest management tactics we can with the rodents. And cockroaches, we have so many great tools that we can use to start getting those populations under control. Again, wear your PPE, masks, gloves, long sleeves, long pants, not only for the protection against pesticides, but protection from other people. Again, key point, every account now has probably become something like an initial or a startup account. We're going to have to treat these accounts like we haven't been servicing them for the last one, two, three, five, ten years. It's, it's going to be a, a, new, a new account because you haven't been in there and there's been no kind of uh, maintenance or cleaning going on in, in who knows how long. <clears throat> so what are the downsides to this? At the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves, can we charge our customers for these cash-up services? Because the customer didn't choose to be shut down. The customer didn't choose to stay away from their business. But then again, you didn't choose to stop service. So at the end of the day, this is a business decision that's going to be, have to be made individually, maybe even per account. How are you going to handle bringing these accounts back up to the standards that you had in place prior to the pandemic. And these, again, are going to be business by business decisions. So again, I think prioritizing <clears throat> public health tests are going to be the most important thing, cockroaches and ants. And that means start with your inspection, physically removing as many of those cockroaches as you can, using bait, using insect growth regulators, coming back in about seven days as a typical German roach follow-up or other uh, cockroach follow-up. For rodents, again, stealing entry points that could have been created in the past few months, uh, trapping, catching all the ones that you can, contain and remove as many food sources as you can, bait applications where applicable and where appropriate, and again, that follow-up in seven to 14 days. For both instances, you want to bring the numbers down as quickly as possible in sort of a clean out slash initial service that we would have done years ago in some cases to these accounts. So what are my overall thoughts for commercial accounts? So the first is things may never go back to the way they were before. And we as PMPs are going to have to really remember that because as much as we liked the way it was, maybe, it's just probably not going to be the same. All right, so then secondary tests. Flies, ants, and other pests. My first, after I deal with cockroaches and rodents, the next of the, the most important pests is going to be flies. And that's where I recommended cleaning. So cleaning was important because, again, pea traps, getting in there, getting the gap, grease traps cleaned out, a lot of that immediately can solve a lot of fly problems because you're flushing those drains, you're cleaning the drains, you're getting water back in the pea traps. All of these things can help with fly problems. Ants and other pests. Again, a lot of times those can be attacked from the outdoors, so you start that application as well. Commercial thoughts. Loss of many businesses um, will affect our business. So there are estimates of up to 15 to 20 percent of small businesses are going to be lost after this pandemic shut down uh, everything that's happened in the last few months and continues to happen. And these are very conservative estimates. I've seen a couple of different places of you know, the number of businesses that are going to be lost. So there's a couple of things I think that can come out of this. Number one, if your business is primarily focused on those small businesses, those small restaurants, those small mom and pop businesses, you're going to be hit hard. And it's going to cause you to potentially lose 15 to 20% of your annual revenue. So what can you do? Perhaps replace that revenue in other places you know, uh, offer additional services, service other clients, that sort of thing. So, um, you know, really focusing on how we're going to recover that, how we're going to continue to uh, have our staff going to work every day. Uh, we do have a limited number of customers. Um, these businesses have a reduction in staff. They have an increased takeout and full bar service. So how do we how do we work our services into what exists today in these commercial accounts? So if you have an account that is still operating, how do we operate our service in this new world order in commercial accounts? 
Um, and again, like I said, PMPs may be faced with a revenue reduction overall due to the loss of these businesses. Okay, so let's jump over to residential accounts. Uh, you know, whether we're talking about a single family home, townhomes, condos, or multifamily housing, such as apartments, um, places where people live. So let's talk about these accounts. So what do I think we can expect in residential accounts? So going back to the beginning, nothing is gonna be the same. Normal is a setting on the dryer. Nothing is going to be the same. Uh, my husband and I got in a conversation a couple of days ago about what he thinks is going to happen in the next six months. And one of the things we talked about is his employer is probably going to um, stay with working from home for the next six months. He probably will not go back to the office on a regular basis for six months. Now, my husband also works in an essential business, but they are able to work from home. But we're all working from home. You know, all of the people who can are working from home. So how is that going to affect our residential accounts? So if you're servicing a house or a residence where essential workers live, for the most part, their life hasn't changed much. If you are servicing a, a residence of someone who owns a small grocery store or works at a grocery store or works at a pharmacy or works at a liquor store or owns a small liquor store, their life hasn't changed much, except for they're stressed out. Um, people are more stressed out. People are freaked out. They're working long hours probably. Uh, there's a lot of people who have said, well, I'm not going to work because I don't want to get sick. Perhaps they have staff that's elderly or immunocompromised that they've said, no, don't come to work. So maybe they've had expanded job duties or, again, have to expand their hours because there just isn't the staff to come in. You have this group of people that their life hasn't changed much. They're seeing all this craziness in the world, but they have to kind of behave as normal. Um, how does this sound to you as a PMP? Familiar? I think it does. So guess what? Communication with these people is key. Tell them what you're doing. Tell, you, tell them how you're doing it. Tell them how you're protecting them because they have to go to work every day as they are essential. Now, what about people like my husband who are working, uh, but maybe his hours are cut. Maybe he's uh, able to go to work, but you know, they've cut their staff by 40% because it's an essential business or they're able to be open, but only uh, limited time. Again, their lives haven't changed uh, much, maybe a little. Most of these people are going to have less disposable income because if they're paid hourly, their, their uh, amount of hours they can work is reduced, and so they're going to have less money. And guess what? These people are going to be stressed out too because they do have to go to work. Um, they do have to go out into the world and all of the things we just talked about with the essential workers. So again, these people are also going to need you to communicate with them. Tell them how you're protecting yourself. Tell them how they're protecting you. Tell them why your services are essential, why you need to be servicing their residents. And what about the people who are working from home or have lost the ability to go to work for whatever reason? Everyone is home all the time. I uh, have a good friend who uh, she is working from home. Her children are at home all the time. Her husband is home all the time, uh, and they have three dogs. And so everyone is at the house all the time. These people have feelings of isolation. They have feelings of depression and anxiety. Mental health is an area of which our country is really going to have to spend some time focusing after all of this because we've all been dealing with all of these situations in very different ways. Um, cleaning routines may have gotten out of whack just because everyone's always home. Why clean the kitchen when 30 minutes after I get it clean, it's dirty again? Everyone has taken on multiple roles. So not only is my friend a teacher, a parent, a full-time worker from home, she's also an entertainer, a friend, a dog mom. She has all of these things now that she's doing 100% of the time. And Everyone is, is under this same pressure all the time when you have families, entire groups of people living in their homes 100% of the time and never leaving. So guess what with these folks? 
communication is key. We have to be talking to them. We have to tell them why we need to come inside if we do. We need to talk to them about the protections we're taking for us and for them. All of those things we talked about, we've got to take the time to communicate. So what has changed in the residential world? So as I mentioned, homes have become everything to these people who are living there. So for example, it's their workspace, it's a classroom, it's become a restaurant, it's become entertainment venues, it's become a gymnastics floor, it's become a dance studio, it's become a music studio, it's become everything to everyone. No one leaves to go experience these hobbies or, or um, things that they love to do. Everything is happening in the home. So what does that mean for us? I believe that in a lot of cases, people have been more aware of pest activity in and around their homes. And I think for a lot of us, we've noticed an uptick in the number of phone calls we've received from residential customers. And this is due just to the amount of time, depth and breadth of time that these people are spending in and around these structures. What are some of the things leading to an increased amount of pest activity? Um, remember I said everything, we're doing everything in our homes. So food debris is throughout the house. Uh, popcorn in the couch cushions, birthday cake in the bedroom, you know, just food spread from the back porch to the front door and everywhere in between. There's also an increase in clutter. All of the things that the kids used to have at school, all of the things that the parents used to have at work, all of that stuff is now at the house. And at the beginning, there was a huge issue with people hoarding. They were hoarding food, beans, flour, rice, toilet paper, um, paper goods, all these things people are bringing into their home, and now maybe they're developing a stored product pest problem, or now maybe they're developing uh, some other pest problem that is new due to some of this behavior. Additionally, every single resident is probably producing more trash. So I mentioned the takeout containers. If you have someone who doesn't cook, and maybe they Grubhub or Uber Eats or DoorDash, all of their meals, all of that trash is building up in and around their structure until it's trash day, and then it gets taken out. But that also means more food for rodents, more food for ants, more food for cockroaches. People are doing more cooking at home. So again, more food debris, uh, more grease, more trash, just all those things that are produced when people are spending a lot of time in one place. So there's a lot of reasons that we could potentially see an uptick in pest activity in and around residences. All right, so what about interior structures, uh, interior structures when it's a residence? PPE is going to be required, as I mentioned, uh, minimally masks, gloves, and maybe shoe covers. And again, this is going back to what is your employer's, what is your plan for protecting yourself and your client? What's the company policy going to be? It's important when we're in these residential accounts to assess the situation visually as much as humanly possible. We're going to try to avoid touching surfaces as much as possible. Try to move fewer items. Do as much of that inspection from a visual standpoint. You're also going to want to avoid setting equipment down. You know, carry a, a flashlight in one hand and your clipboard in the other and try not to set anything down. You're also going to want to avoid touching your face as you move in and out of these residential accounts because these are places people have been for the last few months. And especially if you're dealing with essential workers who have been out in the world, you've got to protect yourself and be even more conscientious about that in those accounts. Another thing I like to remind all pest control technicians when you're in just about any account in modern times is that you are probably being watched and you might even be recorded um, via security cameras. I know that uh, in my neighborhood, you can drive around and see security cameras on most houses, and I know a lot of people have security cameras inside their homes as well. So be aware, everything you're doing is probably being watched and maybe being recorded. So overall thoughts on residential accounts. Um, again, things are not gonna go back. Um, things are going to be different. Normal's a setting on the dryer. Normal's not a thing anymore. Um, with that communication, we are gonna have to sell, resell, and sell again our services. 
So the difficult thing here is if you are barred entry from these residential accounts and you aren't able to get in and talk to these people face to face, how are you going to do that? This is when creative communication comes in handy. And what do I mean by that? Text messaging, phone calls, emails, um, any kind of way you can communicate with your customer that isn't face to face is still communication. Again, most of our customers, if they're working from home, they've gotten used to virtual communication. Um, online webinars, uh, Zoom meetings, go to webinars, um, FaceTime, all these things, people are used to it. Stand out in the front yard, call them and go, hey, would you mind if I FaceTimed you? I've got something to show you. Communicate with your customers and be creative about it. What does this mean? It means these accounts are gonna take more time. You're going to need to allow yourself more time on these accounts because of the time it's going to take to communicate quickly, effectively, and safely. And what I mean by quickly is quickly after the service, um, not necessarily two weeks later, but communicating with those people as quickly as possible after you do their service. Um, you may see a service frequency change. People are going to call and go, we don't want you to come this time. Uh, we just want to call you when we need you. Or maybe uh, they're going to want no contract services. And I think that's something we could see over time, uh, an evolution in our industry. And again, we may be faced with revenue reduction because of that. So we need to make plans. Again, I think from a residential standpoint, um, most of the PMPs I've dealt with, talked to, and, and interviewed before this, they said from a residential standpoint, their revenue is up. So hopefully um, our residential revenue can offset maybe some of the lost commercial residue or revenue. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what I see as the future. Uh, and again, right now, all of this is absolute guesses. Uh, it's the best that I can do. Now, in any case, um, the future is never guaranteed. And I think that um, that's true for regardless of what industry you're in and really regardless of what's happening in the world. Nothing is ever a guarantee. But I think most PMPs and most people in our industry are still cautiously optimistic about the remainder of 2020. We see that we're not um, suffering too badly. We see that we have an opportunity to um, really show our customers why we are necessary, why we are essential. I think another thing that can help our industry right now is that because we are essential, because we're still operating, we have the opportunity to perhaps hire some fantastic people right now. And what do I mean by that? We all know unemployment is up. And for years, one of the biggest complaints in our industry has been finding good people. Well, when things like this happen to the economy, uh, to, you know, a viral pandemic going across the globe, one of the things that does happen is people are out of work. This is our opportunity to comb through those people and find some that are right for our industry and bring them into the fold, as it were. So this is a great opportunity to think about hiring and being really picky about who you're hiring and not have to just settle for a warm body. All right, so let's talk about um, the last thing that's kind of on my agenda for today, and that's how in the world can I grow my business after and during the pandemic? And I think we've already seen a lot of PMPs doing this with additional service offerings. So what do I mean by additional services? The biggest one right now that I've seen is people offering disinfecting services. So adding a service that makes sense. Um, what services can you offer your customers that are value added? And again, I, I kind of have a very short list here, but what can you offer your customers that they can't get easily or they ask you about? Like how often have you been at a, a client's home or business and they've said, uh, hey, you know, I noticed on the IPM report you said blank. Do you know anybody who could come and do that for me? And you go, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like maybe that's a business opportunity for you. Learn how to do it and provide that to your customers. You know, whether that's power washing, whether that's maybe you're just adding rodent control or perhaps um, drain cleaning, you know, whatever it is. Uh, again, right now, the obvious one is disinfecting services, uh, sanitization, but here is a, a few options for growing your business. Now, on KimAnderson.com in April, 
there was an article on how to win in the COVID-19 arena. And basically in this article, there were suggestions on how to accommodate our customers to keep them in service, to keep them having us service their accounts. And one of the take home key messages that I got out of this article is this, whenever possible, flexibility with both our service rates and frequency are critical to our businesses and customers. So if your service is normally $95 a month for a small business and you call your client to schedule and they go, yeah, we just can't do that this month. Say, hey, how about for this month and the next couple of months, I do it for $65. It allows you to keep that customer. Yes, it's a, reduce, a reduction in revenue, but you're able to keep that customer. And we all know the most expensive customer is the one you have to go find. So keeping those customers in service. So what are some of the other things that this article said? Again, flexibility with your clients is fundamental. Be flexible and be willing to um, make accommodations for each of your customers. So what does that mean? Allowing customers to pause or defer. Uh, I just can't afford it right now, I, maybe next month. Okay, that's no problem. I look forward to seeing you next month. Um, adjusting service frequency. I, I realize you're closed right now. It's still very important for me to get in there and at least take a look around. How about I only come every couple of months or I come every, every three months instead of every month? Adjusting that service frequency. The next is maybe consider payment installments. So if you service $100 a quarter, start allowing your customers to play, pay in monthly installments. Um, accept different forms of payment. Um, obviously, credit cards, most people do accept that now, but what about bartering, especially for commercial accounts or restaurants or small other, other small businesses? Considering bartering your services is something you can do that maybe your competition can't. So again, thinking creatively, thinking outside of the box, and being flexible is what's going to win in what's happening right now. So for my final thought for the day is an acronym, and that's take some. Stay the course and stay up to date. And what do I mean by that? Every day what's coming out about this virus and how it affects people and how it is spread is changing. And that's going to mean you're going to have to stay up to date on recommendations to what we're, what we're doing, how we're doing it. And staying your course, being focused on what we are doing today and staying focused on what's important to me rather than all of the noise in the world right now. As we just talked about, offer flexibility to your clients and to your staff. You know, okay, you've got kids at home and it's really difficult for you because your spouse works a different schedule. Well, how about you service your accounts from 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock? Um, you know, whatever kind of flexibility you can offer your staff and your clients is going to help win in the COVID-19 arena. I think everyone understands making safety number one is going to be important moving forward, uh, both to protect ourselves and our clients. And then uh, kind of following the staying the course and staying up to date, make sure your employees are being trained how, when, and where to use their personal protective equipment properly and teach them how to communicate with your clients. So making sure we're doing all of those things, again, not just with our clients, not just with our staff, but everybody understands where everybody else is and everyone's on the same page. So with that, I am finished. And I am going to, my email is right there. If you have a specific question you want to send to me, feel free to send it via email. We do have a few minutes for questions. So I'm going to open the floor up for questions now. And uh, let, let's, let's talk. Let's chat. <laughs> well, thank you, Dr. Reed. Uh, that was fantastic. Um, and, yeah, I, I have a few questions. Questions I've collected from readers, uh, attendees, I should say, uh, both during registration and even a couple during the presentation itself. So um, I guess what I could start with is, um, do, you, uh, do you recommend that a service technician change gloves or other PPE each time he or she services another apartment in a multi-unit building situation? That's a really good question. And I think there's two different sets of PPE we need to talk about. The first is a mask. And I honestly think for most masks, and I'm not talking about respirators here, I'm talking about the kind of masks we are wearing to protect each other from the virus, can really be worn an entire day. You don't need to be changing that in between each and every service account. 
Gloves, on the other hand, it would behoove us to change gloves. Now, I know that can get very wasteful and very expensive. So another option is, much like we wash our hands, wash your gloves with soap and water. So um, there's a really nice aerosol product available for soap and water, and obviously I'm always going to send people to real sinks with soap and water. You can just wash your gloves, treating them much like your hands if you don't want to change them. If you're servicing, let's say, an apartment complex and doing 25 units or something in you know a full eight-hour day. So I think if you're maintaining cleanliness, that's where you want to be, not necessarily changing gloves every single account or every single unit, but certainly thinking about keeping those areas clean. Okay, great. Um, and just out of, uh, like out of your experience, uh, Dr. Reed, uh, have you noticed where uh, I, I know of some pest control companies that actually have like sanitization stations at their firms uh, where, you know, they're actually passing out the PPE, uh, you know, just to make sure that their techs have more gloves and masks on hand that, than they normally would. Uh, are there any other best practices that you've kind of seen floating around for the industry that come to mind? I think just what I've been talking about, having a mm -hmm. plan, having a, a, a plan in place. Like, what are you going to do if you are servicing a, let's use a um, elderly care facility as an example, we know as, as as scientists, as a society, that that's one of the areas that COVID-19 is running rampant is through our elderly care facilities. So if you have to go in and treat one, how are you going to handle that differently than you might if you were going into a, uh, I'm trying to think of something that's open, but a, a pharmacy where people are going in and out, but they're not living there all the time. And, you know, there hasn't been shown transmission in those buildings. So I think that there's also different accounts are going to require different amounts of protection. So, and again, those are going to need to be business decisions based on the most up-to-date information that's available at the time. Excellent. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, and you did cover this a little bit in the presentation, uh, but uh, when they when they just even after you present those different bartering and, and that kind of thing, uh, when they just simply when the customer simply says to you, "Let's skip treatment this time," or "We'll just call you when we need you," uh, is that a case where you maybe suggest reassessing the customer? As far as uh, you know, sometimes you have to drop those good customers, <laughs> um, or is there any other uh, any other ways to take that to kind of keep the customer as long as you can? So from my perspective, if I if my customer says, I'll call you when I need you, I am going to say, this is the time you need to sell yourself and sell your service. What are you providing that customer? Um, you know, why do you need to be servicing that account maybe on an outside only basis? Like, hey, Mrs. Jones, I totally understand. How about we move you to an outside only and I cut your price by, by 25%. You still have the same coverage. I'm just going to cut your price since I know I won't be coming inside. You're, you're going to have to be flexible and creative with those clients. And again, selling, reselling, and selling again the value and the importance of the service that you're offering. And talk about, you know, like Mrs. Jones, we have to understand with you being home all the time, with your kids being home, pest activity can pop up quickly and we need to, you know, stay on top of it from a, a from a continuing standpoint, integrated pest management, keeping those barriers on the outside, treating your yard for fire ants. You know, kids can't play anywhere else. I want to make sure we get the fire ant treatment done. You know, so it's like, Selling and reselling your service every single time is going to become more and more important. And that's why I said creativity and communication is going to be important. Calling your customer, talking to them, telling them, hey, just want to let you know your, our technician will be there. It's a contactless service, so he won't be knocking on the door. He will be leaving a hang, hanger on your front or will be sending you an email. If you have questions, please feel free to call me at this number or text me at this number. Again, communication with those clients. I think that's really what's going to make a difference in the long run. Great. That was a long right. way to go to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I we appreciate it. Believe me. Uh, let's see. Another question we had, uh, talking specifically about those quality audits that PMPs can do ahead of a third-party audited account. Uh, since a lot of those types of clients are requesting uh, less, fewer visits, is there a minimum frequency that you'd recommend? And any any other tips on that type of account? Uh, for those ones that you have those third-party audits, that's go 
those are going to be individually assessed. I, I really can't give much help there because mm-hmm. it is an individual assessment. Each one of those is going to be different. So, um, yeah, that's a wow, way too much for me to cover here today. <laughs> No problem, no problem. How about if I give you a, a slightly easier cu- question to kind of wrap things up here? <laughs> I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Should I use a customer's bathroom during a service? Oh, goodness. Okay. Um, <laughs> my personal opinion is that unless you're servicing an account with a public bathroom, you should never use a customer's bathroom. I just think that's in poor form as a service person. That's my, this is Janice's opinion, not PMP's or CSI's opinion. This is my opinion. Uh, unless it's a public restroom, you should never be using their restroom um, ever. So uh, even, notwithstanding the pandemic, I, that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> That's fair enough. Well, thank you, Dr. Reed, for uh, discussing pest control in this new normal with us today. Uh, We are going to wrap up now. Uh, First, I'd like to thank everyone for attending. We appreciate your time. And now Danielle has a few closing remarks for us. Thanks, Heather. Thank you all for attending today's webinar, Pest Control After a Pandemic, brought to you by Pest Management Professional Magazine and our sponsor, Control Solutions, Inc. If you have any additional questions uh, for Heather or Janice, you can reach out to them directly via the contact information you see on the slide. A recording of this webinar will be emailed to you tomorrow and posted to mypmp.com slash webinars. Upcoming webinars from PMP will also be posted to that page. Thank you for attending, and we, we hope you'll join us for another great webinar soon.